Hi friends, it's Sarah May, and this is an episode called We Are the Slashies, and it's about five ways to grow as a working creative. So what is a slashie? It's basically a person who knows that their day job is not their real job. So a busboy actor, a waitress slash screenwriter slash photographer, a singer slash production designer slash legal secretary. So your slash is basically your professional makeup, and in other words, it's most creative people, if we're honest with ourselves, because a creative thinker is many things. And uh, often like the creative fields don't have set job descriptions because they are a reflection of our creative selves. So today, if you are a slashy, you are probably forging a new path in a wide open sea of opportunity, but you haven't likely solved for the single money making passion that feeds your soul just yet. But that's a good thing, because unlike it, how it might feel right now to be a slashy, this stage of searching and evolving is part of the process. And you're meant to do this experimentation because it's the way you will forge the new career you're supposed to lead. So slashies are a growing percentage of the workforce, and that's because careers nowadays don't really have work experience because they're new. And a creator is able now to build, you know, a new community, a complete new business plan that didn't exist yesterday. And they'll do it overnight. And that's because there are new job definitions in all these new fields and planes created by digital. And they're being invented every day. And that's thanks to kind of the equal opportunity of the internet. And so we're kind of living in a claim jumper era for creatives. And it's ripe for the taking with for anyone that has a desire to build something new that they believe in. So it can be really hard to choose a new career or even entertain this idea because when you're an adult, it's like you want stability. You want something you can trust. You want to have security because, hey, when you are a grown up, that's what you're supposed to do. But have no fear because there are all sorts of new avenues for you to take and just start to evolve the path so that you'll feel stable taking those steps. Because uh, creative thinkers, when they pursue professional careers, they have a set passions that they can apply to it. So there are probably a variety of different paintbrushes that you can use to paint this road. So there are five ways that I am suggesting you better pursue your creative passions and responsibly figure out what you can do with your slashies, with your slashes, to move kind of a more purpose-driven life that is also a career, like a responsible money-making career. Because your creative voice is your greatest asset. And so you have one lifetime, use it for the best results. So here we go. Five steps. So number one is let go of the struggle. So often for creative individuals, the biggest suck to productivity is a focus on our pain and frustration, which is caused by being a slashy in the first place. So if you're a painter, you likely hate that you're also a banker. And if you're a writer, you might feel like you failed at being a writer if you have to serve people burgers. But that is absolutely not the case. And you have to start by changing that mindset. Know that it's an essential part of the process. And this is a way for you to fulfill your particular path. So as a way to protect yourself from the suffering, you just have to start by dividing your jobs by their distinct purpose and value in your mind. Just create little walls between them. Because Yes, it's true. One of the literal downsides to splitting your time is you're unable to focus all of your time on your passion. But in order to make true progress toward figuring out exactly how you are going to make your passion into your livelihood, you have to stop lamenting that fact. And you have to really focus on empowerment because the focus on negativity is the truest time suck. It is the truest suck of your energy and of your valuable inspiration. 
So treat this stage of your life like an objective equation and just separate your mental time and focus just as you would separate your literal time. So this is from the book, You Are a Circle, and I will put this in the blog post of this, a link to this book. Basically, the author describes a great, um, I guess, equation for evolving and continuing to grow as a creative professional. So you'll have three jobs always that you have to juggle. The first one is a job to live, and that's just the moneymaker. It's the serving tables. It's the whatever else it is, being a legal secretary. It basically pays your bills and keeps you uh, safe. So for creatives, that's often taking a job that you can rely on for income, but that fits in the in-between hours. So something like TaskRabbit, where you're actually running errands for people, or Lyft or Uber, something that allows you to work when you decide to. The second job is your professional experiment. And that's basically a job based on your creative slashes and something that you will hope to make money from, but that is most importantly furthering your creative path and your creative name, entity, you know, presence. So like jobs that maybe don't pay exactly what you want, but they are something that's going to go into your portfolio or that's going to get your name out there. Freelance jobs, um, volunteer jobs. Sometimes you have to volunteer, but if, and it, that should be only if it's worth it for your name to be on this piece of work. And, um, in general, you should be paid something for your work, your creative work. That's the second job. The third job is simply just play. That's your job. You have to give yourself time to be inspired. And that means, You don't have to try so hard. It doesn't mean you have to, you know, take a bunch of courses that fill up all of your off hours. It means you have to actually leave room for the rest of your brain, the rest of your person to continue to reflect and take in and just devour life. So that could mean, you know, you make it a point of like exploring a new place every week or you read a new book every week it's just to continue to grow yourself outside of this struggle and this path and like feed your inspiration basically so this job is it's called a job just because it's something you have to dedicate time to you have to not neglect it not discount its value and make sure you are giving yourself room to still be a creative person. So this won't pay you anything, but if you are continuing to play, like by making things, trying things, exploring new passions that have nothing to do with your career path, it's going to grow your capacity as a human, as a creative thinker. So it'll keep you changing and evolving. And it just means you have to uh, push yourself to continue to try new things and allow yourself to expand. So your goal as a creative person is to keep these three distinct jobs completely equally important to yourself and juggle them all at once. Basically, throughout your week, throughout your day, make sure in whatever ratio that you are addressing all three of them. And as long as you can do that, you are, in fact, moving closer to your dream job, which is waiting to be written by you. It doesn't matter how fast or slow because your unique path is something that you are the only one that will write. So the most important part of all of this is forgiving yourself the exact place you are right now on that path and knowing that this is a necessary part of growing into who you're meant to be. So allow yourself just to exist here and don't hate on it and don't focus on why it's not right because it is and it's okay to play with things, to change your mind, to change courses in the middle, to try out a medium and not like it and to totally turn around again. It's, all of that is okay because this is all about experimentation and growing your fearlessness. Right now, you can learn a ton from all of your attempts, your failures, your playtime. You need this time. You need to be allowed to solve for what it is you will eventually master. And so if you are innovating your own job description, you won't likely stumble upon it with like a Google search or a set path 
or a job that has job experience, which is a good thing. It's a great part about being a creative entrepreneur right now. Just remember that your job as a creative thinker might not have a job description and it's up to you to create it. Alrighty, number two, invest in your joy. So if you get joy from doing something, keep doing it. That is just a basic rule of being a creative person. Commit to its value in your life, take it seriously. In other words, do not discount it. It's valuable because your creative passions, the the kind that fuel you, that is something that you can grow exponentially and it'll just be easy for you. That's your gift. And monetarily, it will also come easy to you. So as long as you continue to follow that joy, you will eventually find what it is will make you that money. So don't discount the creative things as irrational or not, you know, not real jobs or casual slashes. Because just because they're not making you money now doesn't mean it won't be in three years from now. But it's up to you to take them seriously and say you mean them. Because those gusts of joy are really just like clues. They lead you to a passion-based career that you will be great at beyond what other people will be talented doing. And find you'll find a lot of success doing it. So that includes all the love-filled, joy-filled hobbies that you might think are trivial. Like taking photos of your ramen on Instagram. The real path to success comes from making an investment of literal time. You need to invest time in it. It also requires you have a serious intention. And it means you are committing to this for the long haul. That equals success, period. So if you find success as a creative who is forging your own path, it comes from evolving and growing yourself bravely. And that means you've got to go through a little bit of trial and error and you've got to stick with it for longer than it feels fun (laughs) like you literally have to keep going when you're like this is boring and I'm not making enough money and I don't like it that's when you have to keep going for double what you've already done which is the hardest part so if there for example like there is a growing percentage of creatives who have found careers as a byproduct of just their social posts because it's fun for them. Therefore, they do it and they do it well because they care. And now they have become like official, quote, influencers. So they get paid by sponsors to create custom posts based on what they do. And why is that good? Because they get paid to be themselves. It's something that comes naturally to them. They're getting paid to do more of their own thing. So it's like the assignment is just keep being you and create another super awesome post to your existing audience. And here, take some money from our perfectly aligned product. It's awesome. So ripe with opportunities, follow your joy. Number three, don't just share, build a community. So just like the saying goes, it's who you know. So much of forging your own success will come from investing in a community of like-minded creative individuals. And it can feel like the internet is cold and anonymous, but it becomes like a series of small towns once you start making connections to the right creative communities that align with your particular voice. And it's through this community that you will really grow your legs. You'll find other people that will be in your exact same position in life, and they'll want you to succeed just like you will want them to succeed. So those people are are people that can inspire you, can support you, and kind of help you build your personal brand just by kind of being a sounding board and echoing back to you like, yes, this is valid. So you are kind of going to be, quote, networking without having to feel gross and dirty and even say that word aloud. The important part of growing your slashes is to find environments that foster and promote those parts of you and that expand your horizons and enlighten you as a creative professional. So be brave in how you build your own creative entrepreneurial community and treat it like an extended group of friends who are excited for you and think you are awesome. So for example, I love creatives. Dot com is an online community for just that. It's creative individuals who are slashies who are trying to connect to others just like them and grow their brand. And that could be for a drink mixer, a lecture, or an individual creative promotion. So I reco you check it out. Number four, treat your creative self like a potential profession. 
and basically invest in expanding upon your passions. Grow the open roads as a professional. And that means just treating it like you would anything at work. Just converting those that skill set and apply it to yourself and your creative passions. Because there might not be job experience for a creative skill that you eventually will perfect, the best way to forge your path is to learn any and all skills related to this area. So thanks to the interwebs, there are tons of new budding creative communities to help you invest in those facets and grow your ability to self-employ or to innovate. So for example, General Assembly, they host lectures spanning mobile app design to public speaking um, to social media posts. It's all over the place, but it's for anybody like you that might be a creative working professional and it's almost like a a professional-based college. So you're taught by people that are actually doing it. And it's for anyone who's making should happen for their personal or professional empowerment. So I would say if you have, uh, you know, an artistic passion that could benefit from having more social media presence, take a course, apply it to your artistic passion. Additionally, Puno, my bestie, who is in a previous interview I did, she hosts webinars with, um, teaches people how to grow their Instagram following. So it's like for individuals or small companies or startups, anybody that's trying to enhance their personal brand or business. So if you have a business that would benefit from a lot of followers, take a webinar. Third on my list is Marie Forleo, who has B-School, and she is somebody I found through my friend group. And it's a basically an online training program for creative entrepreneurs of all kinds. So it's like no matter who you are, what kind of business you have, these are kind of practical tools. And it's like an eight-week course. Um, and you just approach it like it is your future career. And then slowly it evolves into it. Number five, force openness to newness. So the brain by nature hates what is unknown. Chemically, we are adverse to change because we are addicted to what is familiar. That's just default settings of humans. So even if those familiar things make us unhappy and keep us trapped, it is what our chemicals, our muscle memory will crave. So often when it comes to newness, you will have to force yourself to stay open and embrace the new change just deliberately. Because even on a small scale, As a natural stance, it helps to assume openness at all times, no matter what it is. So even if it's like a new online platform that starts up before you're like, oh, I don't want to deal with another one of these. Assume it's going to be awesome. Try it out. Stay open to opportunity because then you will thrive. You will begin to grow at the speed of change. So before you say you hate Twitter or before you... Say you don't want to be public, you don't like sharing, try it. Push yourself to try it for as long as possible. Just commit to not knowing anything for sure ever until you try it. And that being a good thing. Leave yourself open to loving all things and for all things to be exactly what you need. Because very very likely you have no idea what will be that window that opens, that gives you the insight that gets you to your next stage. You have no idea. So stay open to everything. You are on a road that leads to happiness. It translates into all areas of your life because you are growing who you are. And that is extremely valuable no matter what the destination is because it improves your personal expanse. So keep on keeping on. Don't get distracted by staring at your feet. Just keep looking ahead at what's next and keep smiling because You're alive, you're a creative person, and you're growing yourself. This creativity is inside of you for a reason. And that's a beautiful thing. It's a very special quality to have. And it is rare, and you should appreciate that in yourself. That voice or that itch cannot be quieted. It cannot be squelched. And if you ignore it, it will stay under your skin for the rest of your life, just itching to be expressed. I don't want to freak you out or creep you out, but I just want to push you in the same direction with a high 10 and a woo, because being a slashy is not optional. It's necessary. And you are right now being true to who you are. And that is meant to bring 
into the world vast, amazing, beautiful, wonderful content and quality that only comes from you. Everyone has an audience of like-minded individuals, so never feel like yours isn't out there. It's just your job to keep pursuing your own answers and valuing yourself as a creative so that you can find them. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, please share it, and please, please, please give me a review on iTunes, because it helps me pursue my creative self, and that is an awesome thing. Um, And I send you my love. Don't forget to smile. Smile.